I had a pretty interesting thought lately. X-Men 97 story structure is fantastic. In a world where we're being bombarded by basic good guy versus bad guy superhero stories, X-Men 97 gives us a pretty dynamic story structure that works pretty well. We have twists and turns, we have characters being pushed past their limits, and there's a plethora of moments that pay homage to classic X-Men stories. Is it the fact that we can't anticipate what comes next that keeps us engaged? Well, maybe. Despite this, I think we can all agree that the care that the creative team put into the story structure made X-Men 97 a standout series. This got me thinking. What is it about X-Men 97 story structure that makes it work so well? In this video, I'm going to go over what makes X-Men 97 so special, and hopefully after watching this video, you'll have all of the tools you need to create a fantastic story structure of your own. But before we move on, please be sure to like and subscribe to Reverb Comics. You do not want to miss out on our awesome content. Before we get into this, spoilers for X-Men 97. I'm pretty much going to cover every big moment from the series. So to start off, I'm going to go over all of the plot twists. Like I mentioned before, X-Men 97 really pays homage to classic X-Men stories. After watching the series, you can really tell that the creative team was really inspired by the Chris Claremont run on the X-Men. This run on the X-Men was much like a soap opera. At any moment, there could be a soap opera twist that no one could see coming. In the first episode, the X-Men are going about their usual business. They take down a gang with Sentinel technology, and they save a young mutant named Roberto. Cyclops and Jean Grey are pregnant, and they anticipate on leaving the X-Men to raise their child. Then, boom, plot twist number one. It turns out Charles Xavier left his will and testament to his old friend and foe, Magneto. In the second episode, Magneto goes to the UN to go on trial for his crimes. Then, boom, plot twist number two. The Executioner shoots a concentrated dose of radiation at Storm, that strips her of her powers. Meanwhile, Jean Grey goes into labor and gives birth to Nathan Summers. Then boom, plot twist number three. It turns out that the lady Cyclops had a kid with is actually a clone made by Mr. Sinister. Then Mr. Sinister takes control of the Jean Grey clone that goes by the name Madeline Pryor and she abducts Nathan Summers. The X-Men save Nathan from Mr. Sinister, but then boom, plot twist number four. Nathan gets infected with a techno-organic virus and he gets sent to the future with Bishop to get life-saving treatment. In the next episode, Jubilee and Roberto get sent to Mojo World and they fight off video game versions of Sentinels and Magneto. Meanwhile, Storm gets help from Forge to get her powers back, then boom, plot twist number 5. Forge wants to redeem himself for making mutant weapons in the past and he confesses his love for Storm. Then a giant monster breaks into the house. Afterwards, Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit travel to Genosha, a safe haven for mutants where they can live peacefully, free from any prejudice and discrimination. Magneto is in talks to lead the nation, then boom, plot twist number 6. Someone launches a full-scale attack on Genosha using upgraded Sentinel technology. Magneto and Gambit sacrifice their lives in a last-ditch attempt to save as many lives as possible. Then boom, plot twist number 7. It turns out that the creature was just a manifestation of Storm's doubts and fears all along. She beats the creature and gets her powers back. After witnessing the trauma from Genosha, Rogue goes hard trying to figure out who's responsible for Gambit's death. She finally finds Bolivar Trask, then boom, plot twist number 8. She tries to kill him, but this unlocks his powers thanks to a nanotechnology augmentation that he went through. Trask nearly kills the X-Men as a prime sentinel until Cable saves the day with his tech from the future. Then boom, plot twist number 9. Bastion is behind this scheme and somehow Magneto is still alive. Then boom, plot twist number 10. It's revealed that Charles Xavier is still alive on the news. Then boom, plot twist number 11. Bastion turns all humans on Earth who have been exposed to his nanotechnology augmentations into Prime Sentinels, and he launches a full-scale attack on mutants. Then boom, plot twist number 12. Magneto breaks free from Bastion's prison, and he uses his electromagnetic powers to disable all technology that runs on electricity, stopping the Prime Sentinels. Then boom, plot twist number 13. Charles Xavier returns to Earth and tries to reunite the X-Men to set things straight. Thanks to Magneto, the Earth's magnetic field is falling apart and it will be entirely gone by the end of the night. The X-Men break up into two teams. 
one to fight Magneto and the other to fight Bastion. Around that same time, Magneto came up with a plan to start a new civilization with mutants only on Asteroid M. Then boom, plot twist number 14. Mr. Sinister takes control of Cable's mind and Cable uses his telekinetic abilities against Jean Grey. Then boom, plot twist number 15. Wolverine gets the adamantium pulled out of his body by Magneto after he stabs him. Then boom, plot twist number 16. Charles Xavier tries to take control of Magneto's mind to use his powers to restore the Earth's magnetic field. Then boom, plot twist number 17. When Jean Grey seemingly dies, the Phoenix Force comes out of nowhere and saves the day. She uses her telekinesis to put the inhibiting device on Bastion to disable all of the Prime Sentinels. Then boom, plot twist number 18. Bastion rips off Cable's cybernetic arm and uses it to become a powerful winged adversary. Then he flies off to Asteroid M to try and crash it into the world, killing humans and mutants alike. The X-Men fight off Bastion as best they can, then boom, plot twist number 19. President Kelly enacts the Magneto Protocols. The US government launches missiles at Asteroid M in an attempt to kill Magneto, Bastion, and the X-Men. With Asteroid M fast approaching the Earth, the X-Men use their collective power to try and stop it. Everyone does their best to save the day, then boom, plot twist number 20 comes along. The Asteroid and the X-Men get scattered throughout the time stream. Half of them get sent to the past to find a young apocalypse, and some of them get sent to the future to find a young Cable. Now keep in mind, not every story needs this many plot twists. The point I'm trying to make is that the new and exciting plot developments really helps keep the audience engaged. Like or hate X-Men 97, I think everyone can agree that nobody could tell what was going to happen next in the story. Now, not only could we not anticipate what was going to happen next in the plot, we also could not tell what our beloved X-Men characters were going to do next. This series was filled with amazing character moments where most of our favorite mutants had to make really tough choices. Cyclops and Jean Grey were planning on leaving the X-Men to start a family. Then after they found out that Jean Grey was a clone that now goes by the name Madeline Pryor and their son got infected by a techno-organic virus by Mr. Sinister, Cyclops had to make the tough choice to send his infant son to the future with Bishop to get life-saving treatment. Magneto also made a bunch of surprising choices. At first, he wanted to honor his old friend Charles Xavier by dropping his extremist ways towards humankind. He chose peaceful resolutions despite when humans acted violently towards mutants. Then, when a full-scale attack was launched on Genosha, killing at least thousands of mutants, and Bastion launched an attack on mutant kind with his army of Prime Sentinels, Magneto took Earth's magnetic field apart and tried to start a new Genosha on Asteroid M. Any mutant who wanted to join him could come along, and as for anyone else, they could just die on Earth. It's pretty extreme, but that's pretty much par for the course for Magneto. Gambit made some pretty big choices as well. When Genosha was under attack by Sentinels, he pushed Rogue out of the way and chose to take on the powerful Sentinel by himself. Even though he took out the Sentinel, he did lose his life in the process. Although, it looks like he's going to be back as one of the four horsemen for Apocalypse. Rogue has some pretty big character moments as well. She went on a rampage to try and find out who was responsible for the attack on Genosha. She even chose to kill Bolivar Trask. He would have died if it wasn't for the fact that the Prime Sentinel technology was in his body. Roberto chose to come out to his family as a mutant and Storm chose to overcome that owl creature that was a manifestation of all of her doubts and fears. Characters like Bishop, Forge, Beast, Nightcrawler, Morph, and even Wolverine took a backseat to these X-Men characters that got awesome character moments. I got a feeling they're going to have some big moments in the next season. Even though not every character got to make big choices that led to awesome character moments, every X-Men character got involved in some nice emotional conflict. In an odd way, these soap opera tropes made us really feel for the characters. Instead of getting into each character's backstories through flashbacks, almost every X-Men character got caught up in some sort of love affair. Cyclops, Wolverine, and Jean Grey were caught in their classic love triangle. Cyclops got caught in another love triangle with Madeline Pryor and Jean Grey. Even though Cyclops loves Jean Grey, he still has feelings for Madeline given the fact that she's the mother of their child. Rogue was caught in a love triangle with Magneto and Gambit. Even though she chose Magneto, she came to terms with how she really felt about Gambit after he died in Genosha. Forge confessed his feelings for Storm, 
only to have her reject him quickly after she found out about the anti-mutant weapons he built for the military. She later forgave him after she overcame the owl creature that represented all of her doubts and fears. Jubilee and Sunspot got into a relationship with each other and naturally some emotional conflicts came up to the surface. Morph reveals his feelings for Wolverine when he was in a coma. And even Beast gets some love from the reporter Trish Tilby. Things went pretty well until she turned into a prime sentinel. Oddly enough, these emotional conflicts really got us invested in the characters which is phenomenal since it led to a nice narrative flow in the story. Instead of breaking up the story by getting into each character's backstory through flashbacks, the creative team got us invested in the characters by letting them be vulnerable enough to let us see their humanity. We actually get to see Marvel characters experience emotions that we can identify with for the first time in a very long time. All in all, X-Men 97 is phenomenal. I know it, you know it, Marvel knows it, the critics know it, Pretty much everyone knows it. But what do you think? What do you think makes X-Men 97 so special? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe to Reverb Comics so that you do not miss out on our awesome content. Stay groovy.